Welcome this morning to our daily devotional. And I invite you to open your Bibles uh, once again to the 23rd Psalm. The 23rd Psalm. We will read it as we uh, uh, have been doing every day. And uh, we are now in the last two verses of this uh, unbelievable psalm. And we have uh, been able to dig into so many of the treasures and the, the blessings that are found here in what David says as he expresses uh, how he felt about the Lord and, and how he saw himself. The Lord is my shepherd. I am a sheep in his flock. And uh, I hope that as we've been reading the psalm and, and you get familiarized with it, maybe you're to the point where you've already memorized it. I don't know, but that would be a good thing. Read with me, if you will, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths, paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. As we said, the last two verses are really verses of praise. They're, they're verses of uh, David expressing uh, the, the, the awesomeness uh, of having the Lord to be his shepherd. The end result, David is testifying of uh, what a wonderful state of life he was in because he was a sheep in the good shepherd's fold. We saw yesterday that expression, thou anointest my head with oil. We come now to the last phrase in that fifth verse where uh, David says, says, my cup runneth over. My cup runneth over. Now, we need to understand that once again, David is, is uh, referring back to this uh, feast. Remember when we talked about, uh, about the table and, and um, when, when he said, Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Uh, just want to remind you, the, the word there means a spread. It, it, it means uh, uh, a feast that God has set before him. Well, we go back to that image. Uh, when he says, my cup runneth over, uh, it, it's, it's going back to that image of a feast, of sitting down in a table. Um, we know that, that sheep, you know, they, they, don't, you know, they don't have a cup or there's nothing there really related. Uh, all there, there's some that have tried to make some kind of a connection, but there, there really isn't. What David is here doing is he's using the cup as it is used uh, many places in the Bible symbolically. The cup is, is used symbolically in Scripture uh, as a container, cup, a container of blessings, a container of sometimes uh, hard things or difficulties. And a container sometimes of judgment. Um, for example, uh, the Bible uh, tells uh, uh, the Corinthians through uh, Paul that, that they could not drink of the cup of the Lord and, and drink of the cup of devils at the same time. So you cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and then the table of, of devils. So there the, the cup is being used in, in, in a different way. And if you also remember that uh, when, when Jesus uh, found himself, you know, in, in agony and, and, and praying to the Father there in Matthew 26, 39, he says, Oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. 
Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Again, it's talking about what the cup contains. The drinking of, of a cup, uh, of whatever was contained in the cup. And so, uh, the cup is, is used symbolically for what it contains. And here, David is saying, the cup, my, my cup runneth over. It, it, uh, it overflows of the blessings of, in my life because the Lord is my shepherd. But there's some symbolism here that is uh, very important for us to understand. Um, you see, uh, again, the, the image here is of a host. That same host that, that, that pulls out all the stops and set, sets that incredible feast, uh, a big spread. Well, now uh, that same image is you showing how uh, the host would show his welcome to his guest. The image here is of a host who shows his guest how welcome they are and how glad he is. And, and the way they showed that, the way they, the, the, the host would show that to a guest is that his cup would always be filled. As long as the cup would always be filled, the, the, the host was very careful that when, when the cup started uh, getting kind of low, he would fill it up. And that was a sign. It was a sign and a message to the persons he invited that he was glad that they were there and that he welcomed them. Now, when the cup would be empty and it would stay that way for a while, it was sort of like a hint. It was a hint that, hey, you know, uh, the hour is getting late and uh, maybe uh, you ought to be thinking of going or leaving. Uh, you were welcome, but it's, it's time to go. However, if the host really enjoyed somebody's company, he would not only fill the cup, but on purpose, he would fill the cup until it overflowed. And it was an expression of not only am I glad you're here, not only uh, do I want you here, I, I don't want you to leave. And again, the, he, he would not fill it up to the brim. He would on purpose let it overflow. And it was a message. It was a, uh, an expression of how much the host wanted that guest to remain there and how welcome he was and how pleasant it was to have fellowship and communion with that host. And what, what an incredible uh, scene we see here. Um, let me ask you something. It's kind of practical, but uh, have you ever had guests over and um, like from the moment they arrive, you're kind of thinking, I wonder what time they're leaving. <laughs> um, have you ever uh, uh, had guests that, that you know, they're, uh, you, you invite them and they're there, but they kind of like overextend their welcome? Um, some uh, uh, people are so unpleasant that you, you wouldn't even think of hosting them at all or inviting them to your house. Now, before you start thinking things, let me tell you what I'm getting at. You and I, in God's house, we fit that description. We fit it. Think with me a little bit. Think with me about this shepherd that we have. And the things that he puts up with intending to you and me, his sheep. Think with me of how the good shepherd puts up with our stubbornness. How he has to put up with uh, having to go after us when we stray time after time. When we're sometimes insubordinate. Think of how he puts up with having to go after those strays over and over again. The work. And not only that, but the willingness to even 
risk his own life for the sake of the, sh of the sheep. Uh, I mean, think about that for a little bit. Why does God put up with us? I mean, it, it, it's as if, uh, it, you know, you and I, uh, we would probably say enough. Let me put it to you another way. Think a little bit of what the Lord has told the under shepherds. In other words, your pastor. You know how many pastors suffer from depression? Depression that, that is caused by pressure and stress. You know, it, lately it, it's since been so saddening to hear of the number of pastors that have uh, stressed out and then just emptied themselves to such an extent that they don't, they don't see a reason for living and they take their lives. Tragic. I, I've heard too much of that lately. But it, it, it's all a testimony of what it is like to tend to sheep. You would think that tending to sheep is something very pleasant and very enjoyable. It's not. It's not. Wait a minute. But to the good shepherd, it is. It is. My cup runneth over. David is saying, the message that, that David is, is, is giving us here is that the Lord is not just my shepherd. He, just not, he, he does not just tend to me with, with all the difficulty that I give him and all the work and the headaches that, that I would cause him. But let me tell you something about my shepherd. He delights in doing so. My cup runneth over. I do not run out my welcome. Uh, not only is my cup full, but he overflows it to let me know that I'm not just your shepherd because I have no other choice. I delight in being your shepherd. It is pleasant to me to have you near and to care for you. What, what an incredible message here from David. You and I would not for a minute think that tending sheep is enjoyable and a delight. But the, David, the shepherd, is saying here that the love, the interest, the work, and all the cares that he gives to us is a delight to our good shepherd. He delights in doing this. He, it is a joy for him to do it. How long, uh, I mean, can, can the shepherd put up with the things that, that he puts up with? Well, later on, David says, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Verse 6. We'll, we'll be getting there tomorrow. But the blessings from the shepherd, they're not just abundant in the sense of all the things that, that we've seen that he does for us. How would you feel somebody doing something for you when you know that it's not really in their heart? I mean, they do it. They, they go through the sacrifice, the work, the headache or whatever. But... Their heart is not really, I mean, they do it because they have no other choice. That is not our good shepherd. And that is what David is communicating here, that the blessings of the good shepherd are so abundant that, that he can't even contain it. The cup that runs over is not just full, it, it's an overflowing cup. You and I, we, we sometimes think, well, I'm, I'm a bother to God, I'm I'm God's problems. Really? You're, you're God's problem? <laughs> you and I are of no problem to God. And by the way, the problem isn't God. Some of us, we, we kind of hide behind that. Well, I don't know whether really God wants to bother with me. I'm such a bother to God. Not so. Not in the least. My cup runneth over. He's not just my shepherd, but he shows me that my welcome is not ever going to run out. Not only is my cup full, but it overflows, which was the expression of the host telling the guest, you're not just welcome here. I want you here. Please don't leave. My cup overflows. My cup runneth over. This is what David is communicating here.
And again, uh, brothers and sisters, you know, we, we got to get away from this thing of, of, of sometimes even blaming God as if the problem is, is his. Well, I don't know if God really wants to help me. Well, I know God has to put up with me. And yeah, he does. But he does so with delight. It is his delight to be our shepherd. The Bible tells us of God's desire to help us, God's desire to protect us, God's desire, not, not, not just his duty, but his delight and his desire in the expression of the Lord Jesus as, as he came in, into the city of Jerusalem. And in Luke 13, 34, the Bible says that Jesus looking at Jerusalem said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem which kills the prophets and stoneth them that are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy sheep together as a hen doth gather her brood under her wings, and ye would not. A little bit of a different image here. Not of a shepherd and the sheep, but of a hen. A hen that, that takes the, the chicks, uh, uh, the, the, the brood under her wings for protection and for care. And, and Jesus is saying, the problem is not me. How many times have I wanted to? But let's be honest. The problem is that is not that I don't want to. The problem is that you don't want to. And I ask you, has he not been able to shepherd you for one simple reason? Is that is that you don't want to? Don't blame it on here. His delight is to be your shepherd if you would allow him to do so. My cup is not just full. My cup runneth over. How long will the Lord be my shepherd? And, and how long will he put up with me? Well, again, David says, he's my shepherd all the way until I reach his home. All the way until I reach his house. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We'll talk about that tomorrow. God bless you. Meditate on these wonderful truths and have a wonderful day. See you tomorrow.